So today we're going to extend the work on multiplication and division by looking at ratio. Now ratio is where we compare two groups and so let's say one of the examples that we use, is, use compares boys and girls at club. How many boys and how many girls? And in a ratio we kind of simplify that down to as few children as possible. So I think the ratio we might use is three girls for every boy at the club. Um, and then that's not of course the actual number of people at a club. We have to then scale that up. Um, and so that's what we're going to be looking at today, is scaling up and scaling down from ratios. Um, now, understanding a multiplication is much deeper if you can do it in different ways, including in ratio. So I, ha I hope you find it really thought-provoking, really, th really challenging. We're going to draw pictures to help build our understanding as well. Uh, let's get going. To start with, some of the examples that came through from yesterday. I love these ones because I love the examples, and also because they came through to me really early. I often do my best thinking early in the morning. And so it, I had these examples through in my inbox really, really soon. So again, well done. Um, now this is one from, I hope I pronounced this correctly, Pragya. And uh, again, I love this example. Now, it, she says, Emily has 50 grams of butter, 60 grams of sugar, 75 grams of flour and one egg. How many cakes can she make? I've got a slight twist on this question that I wanted for you. You might be able to work out how many cakes she can make. Equally, I wondered, I wondered if you could figure out which ingredient is the one that's kind of limiting how many cupcakes she can make the most. So which ingredient will, will Emily run out of first? Um, so either if you can work out how many cakes she can make or which ingredient will, will Emily run out of first? Pause the video and have a go at that. Okay, now I noticed something about how these questions were designed that I thought was interesting because all of them apart from one, the amount that we have is a quarter of this recipe. So 200 grams of butter, 50 grams of butter is a quarter, 300 grams of flour, 75 grams of flour is a quarter, one is a quarter of four eggs, but 60 grams compared to 250 grams, well four lots of 60 is 240, so that is less than 250. Um, and so it will be the limiting one is sugar. That's the ingredient we'll run out of first. Now, I really had to think, well, how can I work out then how many cupcakes can be made? And it was only when I realised this, and I, this is why, again, such a cleverly thought out question. 250 grams of sugar makes 25 cupcakes. So one cupcake, for each cupcake, we need 10 grams of sugar. And it was only then that I thought, actually, so how many cupcakes could I make with these ingredients? Six. Again, wonderful, wonderful question. Th this one from James was quite different. Um, but again, wow, challenging as well. Um, you know, I, I thought that I was testing you, but James is, is I think he's extending us even further. Um, to have a look at this one. Jake has 520 grams of butter. He has plenty of the other ingredients. How many cupcakes, how, how many cupcakes can he make? It's like a tongue twister. Um, so pause the video, have a go at this one. Okay, now I'm going to see if I can show you some of the different steps that I broke this down into. So I thought, well, 200 grams of butter uh, is enough for 25 cupcakes in our recipe. So 400 grams of butter, well, that'll be 50 cupcakes. Um, but then we're after, well, what about with 520 grams of butter? So I thought the first things I'm going to have to think of are, well, what about 100 grams? Um, so I can get up to 500 grams and also 20 grams. So 100 grams, well, 200 grams is enough for 25 cupcakes. So 100 grams, 12.5 cupcakes. Now, what about 20 grams? Well, I, I did, if we do 100 uh, divided by 5, that gets us to 20. And so that would be... 2.5 cupcakes. So having a look at all these numbers here, um, so in total I will need to add up the 400 grams, the 100 grams and the 20 grams and that will give me in total 520 grams of butter enough for 65 cupcakes. Again, lovely, lovely question. Now today we're looking at ratio. Now Recipes are an example of ratio, um, and we're going to have a look at different examples of ratio where we have to scale up and scale down. And so that will include conkers and it will include tennis. Have a look at this little prompt here. Ben has, and we don't know how many times, as many conkers as Holly. 
But we know Ben has more than Holly. So Ben and Holly have some combination of, in total, and we're going to think, well, how many could Ben have and how many could Holly have? Um, so let's say Ben has two times as many conkers as Holly. Um, then this drawing kind of shows that. So for every two lots of conkers that Ben will have, Holly will have one. Um, and so let's say um, that Ben has, they have got 12 conkers in total. Um, then that would mean that Ben must have eight and Holly must have four. Because can you see Ben has twice as many lots as Holly? So it's almost in total, we're splitting into three parts, giving Ben two of the parts, so he has two times as many as Holly. And um, so in total, Ben has eight, Holly has four. Now, pause the video and just see if you can come up with a different combination of ways of answering this question. See if you can maybe come up with a couple of different answers. Maybe you change the number that's in here for your different answers, or maybe you change the quantities, but just see if you can throw in a few different examples of possible answers here. Okay, and when, when you've got a few different answers, um, let's have a look at some possibilities. Um, so let's say it was that Ben has three times as many conkers as Holly. That could be represented by that drawing. And then let's say Ben and Holly have eight conkers in total. Then of course Ben would have six and Holly would have two. So this is three times as many. Uh, six for Ben, two for Holly, eight in total. Let's say Ben has four times as many conkers as Holly. Then I'll need to change my picture slightly. So now I've got five parts. Um, and then if Ben and Holly have 40 conkers in total, I decided rather than using circles, I would use numbers now. 40 in total. So how many lots of... Um, so there's five sections, so it must be eight in each section. So Ben would have 32 and Holly would have eight. And uh, of course, 32 is four times more than eight. Now, have a look at this one. So Ben has three times as many conkers as Holly. Ben and Holly have 24 conkers in total. Mm, pause the video. How can, we, how can we work out how many will Ben have, how many will Holly have? Can you use those drawings? Could that be helpful? Have a go. Well, let's have a look. Um, so a drawing, again, I, I'd make sure that Ben has three times as many as Holly in the drawing. Um, and then I've got to, th well, look there, I've got four sections. So I'll divide my 24 by four. Um, so six in each section. So Ben, 18, Holly, six. And there I can see 18 plus six is 24. And uh, 18 is three times more than six. How about this one? Ben has four times as many conkers as Holly. Holly's got four. How many will Ben have? Pause the video and have a go. course for this one we'll see a slightly different drawing um, in that the ratio will be four to one and um, and Holly has got four so Ben will have four times as many as that four lots of four so in total Ben will have 16 and there'll be 20 conkers in total now have a look at this one there are three times more girl boys than girls in tennis club there are 36 children in total how many girls go to tennis club there's two possible drawings here. I want you to have a look at them and decide which one's correct and see if you can explain the mistake on the other one. So again, I've not put a pause sign, but you might want to pause the video here. Um, and which one's correct and can you explain the mistake? Okay, well, let's have a look. Well, they've both drawn the ratio correctly of three to one, three to one. Well, what's different here? What's different? It says there are three times more boys and girls. There are 36 children in total. So these four sections have got to be 36. So to work out the value of each section, I do need to do 36 divided by four. That's nine. So there will be nine girls and there'll be 27 boys. The mistake here, we've done 36 divided by three. Hmm. It doesn't say there are 36 boys. It says there are 36 children. That's the mistake that's been made there. Now, I'm going to show you an example and show how the slight change in the wording can affect the strategy that you would use to calculate with. For every three children on the school trip, there is one adult. There are 24 children on the trip. How many adults? So there, that, that, that might be a way of showing that with a drawing. Um, three children for every adult. Um, and then we've got 24 children on the trip. So working out how many adults, well, how many children, what's the value of each section? I need to do 24 divided by three. 
So the value of each section will be eight. Um, so there'd be eight adults. But have a look in the change in the wording. Um, if it says there, for every three children on the school trip, there is one adult. There are 24 people on the trip. How many adults? Well, the drawing will look the same with one difference. This time, the 24 represents all the people, not just the children. So how many adults must there be? There must be six. It's often really important to have a look at questions like this and to see how small changes, how they actually affect the calculation strategy that's needed. So to get these questions, click on the blue link underneath this video. Um, and we're going to start with a which picture question. So have a look at the, at the question here and see which picture represents that correctly. And can you explain the mistakes that have been made? And so did Ben get it right or Cam or Gavin in the drawing? And how can you use that to be able to answer the question? Um, and then have a go at either uh, small twist questions, the first set or the second set. Now, the questions are similar, like that last example, but there's a little change in the wording. And again, I would love to see the drawings. So how is your drawing different for each slightly different question? And if you can see that, then you've understood this really, really well. Now, again, if you want to create a ratio question, send it through. That might well feature on Friday again. Question, answers to the questions are at the bottom. Um, and yeah, and again, brilliant having you joining in. Great seeing all your different creative examples. And I will be back just like always tomorrow.